Hello, traders. Gary Wagner here. Approximately 1.15 in Honolulu, 7.15 in New York on Wednesday, October 27, 2021. And this is the daily report for gold and silver. We had a modest increase in the price of gold today. We had a modest increase in the price of silver today. However, in the case of gold, we have seen real resistance at $1,800 per ounce. That being said, the future direction of gold and if it goes up, how fast it will go up are going to be contingent, I believe, on two factors, two meetings, so to speak. First, tonight in the mainland, Thursday morning in Europe, the European Central Bank will meet for their October meeting and then next week on the 3rd of November, we will have the conclusion of the November FOMC meeting. What they say will influence and shape where gold pricing goes. Gold is still recovering from yesterday's $35 price range and $12 decline with modest gains today, a gain of $4.90, about a quarter of a percent, with the current December contract fixed at $1,798.30. While the dollar did influence gold, providing very, very fractional tailwinds with a decline of 0.06%. It was primarily the yield curve, the differential between different debt instruments such as the 10-year note, the two-year note, that also were highly supportive of gold. Lastly, silver had a gain today, but it was only about four cents or 0.15%. Currently, we have December futures fixed at $24.12.5. Gold is trading overseas and is equal to the close of New York, $1,798.80. That being said, there's a couple of things that we absolutely need to point out that I believe are continuing to guide us on our current trade as well as what we're looking for in gold. First of all, the green line represents the 50-day moving average. If we look at the recent lows as we broke above this resistance trend line that I believe has now become support, it has stayed above the 50-day moving average. The second thing is the black line represents a very, very short term, at least uh, for trend traders, the 21-day simple moving average. And while crosses between the 50-day and 21-day moving averages do not create any kind of golden cross, what is interesting to note is there is a narrowing of the gap between the 21-day and the 50-day. 50-day being on top represents a more bearish demeanor. If we do get across, though, that would represent definitely a more bullish demeanor as the short term correctly goes above the longer term in a bullish scenario. Lastly, I want to look at current pricing as it pertains to the former resistance line. And this resistance line or trend line was simply created by using the most recent highs and then this lower high, I did extend it up until the beginning of June. However, this is where it's fixed off of these two points. Ever since we saw market forces take gold very short term above $1,800 per ounce, the following day, meaning yesterday, went back below it. Today, we are precariously close to $1,800, but unquestionably, this price point remains a resistance area. The question is, how strong is that resistance and what will it take to move above it or have it fail? Well, there's two events coming up. One today in Europe, meaning tonight in the mainland, which is the October meeting of the European Central Bank. While it is largely anticipated that they will leave their financial stimulus as well as their interest rates where they are, that has largely been factored into the market. However, if that is the outcome, I believe that would boost gold pricing higher as it's now had an assumption that has been confirmed. But the most important event will occur next week, the 3rd of November, when the FOMC meeting concludes the release of the statement from that meeting as well as a press conference by Chairman Powell. As I addressed in our opening letter today, the Federal Reserve and the ECB have painted themselves into a corner. 
I put it, stuck between a rock and a hard place because the inflationary pressures as they mount and grow are going to require some action by central banks, and that would be typically raising of interest rates. However, the repercussions from raising interest rates too soon could have a catastrophic impact on the economic global recovery that is currently in place because that has been fueled by actions of central banks worldwide with an extremely accommodative monetary policy. Currently, we have gold once again touching upon $1,800 with the current price at $17.99.10. Lastly, I do want to take a quick look at silver pricing. If you recall from yesterday's show, I talked about the distinct possibility that we would issue a trade alert in silver vis-a-vis -vis the December contract. And that is because silver touched, traded above on an intraday basis, a key and relevant price point that I need to see taken out, which is $24.27. It did close below that price point, and in fact opened lower than the close in New York as it began to trade overseas. So we will patiently await that. But the one thing that is interesting is look at how the differential has narrowed between the 50-day and 21-day moving averages. This has been Gary Wagner wishing you as always good trading. We will talk to you tomorrow for the next daily update and review. Bye-bye.